Hello everyone and welcome to SFF 180 and the final installment of the 12 Days of Halloween 2017. Tonight, the secrets of an old Florida society family begin to unravel in their haunted Jacksonville mansion in Mormama. Thank you all for joining me once again. Thomas here, your host, as always. The SFF community mourned the death barely one month ago of Kit Reed at the age of 85, a veteran author best known for dark, often satirical speculative fiction. Now, while she was never what you might call a fan favorite or a major bestseller, she had a long career, admired by her peers, and she was a genuinely kind lady from what I could gather. Tweeted me a very nice thank you for my review of her dystopian novel, The Baby Merchant, and her very first published short story, The Wait, dating all the way back to 1958, remains one of the most chilling works of early feminist horror you're likely to read anywhere. And so I was really looking forward to wrapping up this year's Halloween celebration by reading Kit Reed's final novel, the Southern Gothic More Mama, flush in the hopes that it would prove to be a proud valedictory capstone to a fine career. Heartbreakingly, that's not the case. While it contains its moments of writing that absolutely shine, the novel simply is not representative of Kit Reed at her finest. To put it more bluntly, it's dull, repetitive, weak on character, and totally lacking in suspense or, for that matter, any kind of strong narrative engine to carry us through to the finish. Seriously, if a novel could be composed entirely of wisps of ectoplasm, this is that novel. It is essentially a book about old family secrets told from multiple viewpoint perspectives in the way so many books are written today. Now, this ought to be the perfect formula for, if nothing else, wonderfully salacious trash. But Reed can't even get invested in that angle of it. At least it starts promisingly enough. A man calling himself Del Duval, suffering from memory loss, arrives at the decrepit old Jacksonville, Florida plantation home of the Ellis family. He has no idea who he is, and he's come to the home only because a calling card with its address was in his pocket when he woke up from whatever happened to him. The house is run down. In that way, all old run-down southern mansions are meant to represent the faded wealth and prestige of a bygone time that fewer and fewer people each generation can be bothered to miss. It's inhabited by three elderly sisters, Ivy, Iris, and Rose, and some distant relations, Lane and her 13-year-old son, Theo. There's one more tenant, the ghost of Charlotte Robichaux, now how's that for a southern name, whom everyone calls more mama because she was one more mama than the family needed. The narrative bounces between everyone's perspectives, including more mamas, but with the exception of the ghost's remembrances of her own life, we never get any real insight into anyone's character, and no one seems to go through much of a developmental arc. Charlotte grew up the hated daughter of Manette Ware, an old money society mother who was so domineering, she essentially overtook Charlotte's role as mother when she had a daughter of her own, even naming the girl Manette after herself. The young Manette went on to develop her grandmother's arrogance and contempt for her mother, and the family line follows down through her three daughters, Ivy, Iris, and Rose. What's that? You say you'd expect a southern gothic melodrama featuring an old mansion with a ghost to be, you know, creepy and spooky and stuff? Not here. More Mama does little other than manifest, warn Lane and Theo to get out while the getting is good, and not much else. We're informed that the house is built upon some kind of supernatural anomaly that, for some reason, has killed off all the men in the family, but this is never anything in the plot that's presented in a way to create terror or suspense, nor is it really all that well explained. Ultimately, the book becomes a treadmill of different voices, many of whom, like Theo, simply never sound convincing. Spinning out a patchwork narrative about lives, we aren't given much reason to care about, in a manner that's the polar opposite of the show-don't-tell principle. And, you know, considering everything that could have gone for a story like this, failing to go for it, it comes as no surprise that the ending is abrupt and unsatisfying as well. I don't see that I would have enjoyed this one very much even if I hadn't preceded it with two weeks' worth of nine horror novels and four novellas, most of which were exceptionally strong this year. 
But for every trope that More Mama checked off its list, I was able to point to a book that pulled it off so much better. Hmm, Dark Family Secrets? Well, Moriah and the Silent Companions for sure. Hauntings? How about Silent Companions again? Oh, and also The Twilight Pariah. Hmm, Danger from Beneath? Beneath. Kit Reed was a fine and important writer of SFF, and I encourage you to find the earlier work that puts her talents on better display. Novels like The Baby Merchant or Thinner Than Thou, or especially her massive collection of short stories, The Story Until Now. But More Mama is one you can leave behind. Just let it pass from your memory like some old southern ghost whom no one needs to remember anyway. And that's all I have time for on this episode of SFF 180, and I want to say a particular thank you to all of you who have stuck with me through the 12 days of Halloween celebration. Yeah, 12 videos, 12 reviews, wow. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do anything next year that's this work intensive, uh, and uh, yeah. You know what's going to happen? Another year is going to roll around and I'm going to be hyped to do it all over again. Hey, glutton for punishment. But I want to be able to showcase these writers and these stories because horror fiction isn't really well supported by the publishing industry, especially not the big five in the publishing industry. None of the big five companies have dedicated horror imprints the way they do for SFF, you know, like Del Rey and Saga and, you know, Daw, right? There's nothing like that for horror. You have to dig into the indies and the small press to find what's going on in horror fiction these days. And so I like to pick Halloween as my time to shine a light on some of these talents. And these reviews maybe don't get the views of some of my more popular content, but I know some of you out there appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed it this year again. So please hit that like button, share the video, and above all, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. That's how SFF 180 grows. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits into Wink's Army get little perks like getting to see my videos a day early sometimes, things like that. I want to thank all those people for their amazing support. Got a new supporter last night. Thank you all so much. And I want to thank the rest of you just for being amazing, incredible viewers. And so until I see you next time, when SFF 180 returns to its regular SFF programming. Happy reading. <laughs>